namani pati sa piring ingat spiritu sancti. Amen. Today, it is our uh, joy to celebrate the feast of Saint Dominic, founder of the Dominicans, and as many of us know, uh, the one to whom Our Lady entrusted uh, the rosary, uh, as we cur currently know it today, the 15-decade rosary uh, that we all pray, a great, greatly powerful devotion, was given to uh, Saint Dominic, which we will, we will hear in the course of his life. So St. Dominic was born in Spain in 1170 to members of the Spanish nobility of the Guzman family, uh, Guzman as they say. His mother was a very pious woman and before his birth, uh, while she was pregnant, dreamed uh, that her child was a dog holding a torch in its mouth and he set the world on fire. This is where somewhat his name is very fitting for that. Uh, Dominic means is or a contraction of Domini Canus, which means the dog of the Lord. Uh, in the Bible, the biblical imagery, dogs are uh, preachers uh, alerting the world of the truth. So St. Dominic, as a young man, had a very good education and he spent uh, 10 years in his, uh, from his teenage years studying the arts, uh, theology, and philosophy. He was an exemplary student and um, uh, also uh, to this intellectual brilliance combined a very great charity. In the year 1191, there was a famine in Spain that left many people desolate and starving, and Saint Dominic sold everything he had, his furniture, any extra clothes he had, in addition to the school books he needed to study. And as other students asked him why he was doing this, and he said, can I study from dead skins while other, other people are dying, uh, dying of hunger? So a uh, very great charity he displayed at that young age. But eventually he uh, joined an order of clerks regular, the diocesan monastic order, we could say, in 1194. And after seven years after joining, had become the sub-prior and assistant to the bishop. He was 31 years old at the time, a uh, very capable man, obviously. So he accompanied um, in his various duties, he accompanied the, the, his bishop on a visit to Rome. And this bishop himself was very pious and asked the Pope to uh, relieve him of his duties as bishop so that he could uh, go on a foreign mission and convert pagans to the faith of Christ. Uh, the Pope refused him this request and instead sent him on a mission to reconvert Catholics who had fallen away from the faith due to heresy. Specifically, he sent them to southern France, which was suffering from the Cathar heresy at that time, also known as Albigensianism. And this was a kind of a warmed over Gnosticism, which saw the world as a struggle between two equal forces, uh, the forces of good and the forces of evil, a good God and an evil God. And part of this, their teachings was that the spirit was good and the matter was bad. The world was bad, the flesh was bad, the body was bad, all matter was bad and should be resisted and treated as such. And so this, this order of Albigensians uh, was very, uh, treated the body very harshly, looked down upon marriage, looked down upon uh, procreation and all manner of things, um, while strangely at the same time, because the body didn't matter, engaging in all kinds of physical excesses as well. So this, this schizophrenic heresy, uh, they, go, they go together. So um, uh, this, this bishop is assigned uh, the mission of trying to convert these Albigensians, which was an ongoing attempt uh, with, with the church, and St. Dominic accompanied him on these efforts. And what St. Dominic noticed was that although the preaching was very good and the truth was being given to these heretics, the example was bad, in that because of the Albigensian view of the body and austerity, many of them were very penitential. They lived very frugally, they did a lot of penance, and these many of the preachers going to them had retinues and servants, and they had uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 comfortable clothes and so on. And so this, this was immediately um, uh, it put off the, the, the heretics immediately. They, they wouldn't listen to the message because they were uh, disedified by the behavior and the example of those preaching it. So St. Dominic himself was a very austere man, a man accustomed to penances, and he recognized this is what is needed, both words and example. And so before he would ever go into a town to preach, anybody, anybody with him, he would um, 
uh, take off his shoes, walk into the town barefoot. He would sleep on the, on the bare floor, uh, lived a very penitential life, and this disposed the heretics to receive the message that he brought of truth. Dispose them first, then give them the truth. So he was making greater headway than any other efforts so, thus far. However, uh, it still wasn't enough. He was, just was not making very many converts. And so it, this is very distressing to St. Dominic, and he spent three days in fasting and in prayer outside the city of Toulouse, which was the Albigensian um, headquarters, we could say, the, the, the main city. And he was uh, praying very greatly to be given the grace to know what to do, how to convert these heretics, thinking primarily, you know, what are the arguments, what, what philosophy, what theology do I need to present? And in a, in a famous vision, uh, Our Lady appeared to him and gave him the rosary and said, it is by this that you will defeat heresies. Now, the rosary uh, the, the, at this time, what, what that meant for St. Dominic was it wasn't like she came down with, you know, holding the rosary that, you know, we kind of sometimes see. Uh, that was already being used. Uh, using beads as prayers uh, or to count prayers was, was a very ancient custom. And in fact, 150 Hail Marys was already being prayed by uh, various other orders. Uh, the Cistercians uh, were, would pray, uh, it was called Our Lady's Psalter. They would pray one Hail Mary for each of the 150 psalms. Uh, but that was it. It was, it was just, it was an 150 Hail Marys, 150 Our Fathers, and there were no mysteries, and there were no uh, meditations assigned to it. So this is what St. Dominic was given, was Our Lady giving him the rosary as three separate groups of 50 Hail Marys each. There's the joyful, the sorrowful, the glorious mysteries, and these 50 Hail Marys will be set off in groups of 10 with one Our Father uh, uh, setting them off. And that, that was the rosary. That was what Our Lady told Saint Dominic. And it wasn't just, just pray this and everything's gonna be, gonna be wonderful. Everybody will be converted. It was preach to them the mysteries. Preach to them the joyful mysteries of the life of Christ, the Annunciation, the Visitation, the Birth, all those are mysteries. There, there are theological uh, lessons to be drawn from it, spiritual lessons to be drawn from it. This is what I want you to preach. And that is what was given to St. Dominic. So uh, he, he, was, he was overjoyed by this vision and overwhelmed even. And the very next day goes into the city of Toulouse and goes into the cathedral. And somehow the bells began to ring uh, just miraculously. And the people drew the people to the cathedral. They gathered there to hear him preach. And he preached a thunderous sermon. Literally, there was a thunderstorm going on when the people were in there. It was like crashing and lightning and the people were greatly afraid. And there was a, a, a large picture of Our Lady and people saw the picture's arms move. Our Lady's arms in the picture moved, raising her arms to heaven. Uh, so the people were, were rather terrified by this, this manifestation of God's power. Uh, St. Dominic prayed, uh, the storm subsided, and he, he, he told them that this is the truth. This is the true faith. You need to reconvert. And they did so. They began to do so in droves. And this is what St. Dominic spread with his, with his monks, or not his monks yet, that the, the Dominicans didn't exist. What happened is he, he drew a group of men together, taught them the rosary, taught them how to preach the rosary, and showed them this is how you have to live. This is the austere, penitential life you need to have, living by alms and so on. Uh, so these men began to have great success, and St. Dominic, that is when he realized it was time to found a new order dedicated towards uh, uh, spreading the rosary and preaching. So he, he was, uh, his order was, he, he drew it up, it was called the Dominicans, and it was approved uh, in the year 1215. And, and in fact, the order was known as the Order of Preachers, in Latin, Ordu Predicatorum, and this is why any Dominican will have after his name, like, you know, Father... John Smith, O.P., Order of Preachers. All right, that's where they, they get that, um, uh, that suffix there. Uh, so it wasn't, it wasn't just St. Dominic's uh, brilliance in education, right, his brilliant mind. It wasn't just his uh, penitential way of living, his austere penances. It wasn't just his devotion and prayer and love for Our Lady, which was certainly the, the most powerful of it. He was also an excellent leader and administrator. And he knew that to combat this heresy would require more than just the, the efforts of a few men. So he, um, it said that he combined clarity of vision, firmness of command, certainty of execution, and gentleness of demeanor. So he established uh, universities, or rather um, schools of theology, 
at the universities in Rome, at the university in Paris, a university in um, uh, Spain and elsewhere. And he was establishing these schools precisely to teach, uh, to train men the theology, the philosophy they needed to go out and preach and make converts of these heretics. As I mentioned, additionally, uh, because they were members now of an order, they were living a penitential life, they had a rule, uh, they had a spirituality, and so the, the whole combination was coming together. And it was very successful. Uh, membership in the order grew rapidly across Europe uh, th through preaching, through example, and St. Dominic himself would spend the rest of his days either in Rome or traveling all over Europe. And his accommodations were always poor. His clothing was plain. Uh, he wouldn't sleep in a bed. He would enter towns barefoot uh, and so on. Uh, the Pope himself, the various popes, were very um, held St. Dominic in high esteem and gave him various tasks to accomplish in Rome. Uh, among them, uh, the, the reform of women religious orders there in Rome, which he accomplished very well. And he was given the church, the Basilica of Santa Sabina, as his headquarters, which even today, 800 years later, is still the headquarters of the Dominican order. So very great continuity there. Uh, so he was um, uh, very active, uh, very um, 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 energetic, we could say, in spreading the faith. Uh, and in July of 1221, uh, he grew sick with a fever. Uh, he, a few weeks later, became evident he would not recover. So he called together whatever monks were there. He exhorted them to a holy way of life. And then he died on August 6th, the Feast of the Transfiguration, at 51 years of age. Uh, so a, a great saint, tremendously important uh, time in history on uh, combating the Albigensian heresy and the blessed vessel uh, through which our, our um, uh, Blessed Virgin Mary wished to give the rosary to the world. So we do. We owe that, that debt of gratitude uh, to the Dominican order, specifically to St. Dominic, for giving us the rosary. I mean, how many of us think it's, it's a staple of our Catholic life? Pray the rosary. Pray the rosary. Our Lady told the shepherd children of Fatima, pray the daily rosary. And, and we, we don't think about it that at one time this didn't exist, right? This, this devotion of our, of our Lady's Rosary did not exist. Uh, it is a great privilege to have that, and um, uh, we should look at it in that way, in that we have the opportunity of praying the Rosary. It's, it's, it shouldn't be viewed as a burden or something we have to get through or get over with, but it's an opportunity. And furthermore, uh, what distinguished the Rosary from the 150 Hail Marys already being said by many, you know, uh, monks and holy men and women was meditation on the mysteries of the rosary. That's what made it specifically what it, what it was and, and what it is, is meditation while praying uh, each of the, of the groups of 10 Hail Marys, the Our Father, the 10 Hail Marys, the Glory Be. What's the mystery? What's the, what's the fruit? What's the, um, the, the uh, um, spirituality, the lesson that I need to be learning from this, right? And it's inexhaustible. That's why we can, we can meditate upon the rosary over and over again, the same mysteries, and still draw something new uh, every single time. Uh, so um, let us think about this. Let us ask our Lord for that grace to be given to us to have that spirit, something of the spirit of St. Dominic, who loved souls so much, who wanted to spare souls uh, from the pains of hell, that he was willing to travel all over Europe, spend his whole life uh, in this, establishing schools and learning and teaching others to learn uh, the truth, the truth of God, how to live, how to be penitential, how to be an example, to save souls from hell. Uh, and that is what Our Lady said. Why do souls go to hell? Because they have no one to pray for them. Uh, let us be that someone who does pray and who does our part uh, to rescue those poor souls and those poor sinners. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.